Welcome back to my dependency inversion principle series. At the end of the last video, we extended our copy function with the ability to target either the console or a file for output, but this extension increased the complexity tremendously. Now we'll check out what the actual problem is and therefore we'll have a look at the dependencies of our copy function. If you never heard the term dependency before, you would probably like to know what it means. A dependency is essentially another piece of functionality that you call from the code you are currently writing. In the first version of our copy function, we had three dependencies, console.readKey, console.write and the console key info structure that was returned by the readKey function. If you compare this to the second version, there are four more dependencies one to the target enum and three to the functions of our file class. You can also easily imagine that with every new source or target that we want to support, the number of dependencies will increase for the copy function. And that is one of the main reasons why the readability and maintainability decreases. But with the possibilities of object-oriented programming, we can keep the number of dependencies for our copy function stable. So let's check out what the dependency inversion principle, or DIP in its short form, has to say in this regard. The DIP is defined as follows. High-level modules should not depend upon low-level modules. Both should depend on abstractions. And abstractions should not depend upon details. Details should depend upon abstractions. If you've heard this definition for the first time, you're probably a bit confused, but don't worry, we'll sort through all the details in the upcoming minutes. Let's focus on the term high-level module first. In our example, the copy function is a high-level module because in order to work correctly, it uses functionalities that are defined in other parts of the source code. These other functionalities are low-level modules because each of them solves a single part of the problem but all these are not orchestrated yet, and that's the task of the high-level module. In computer science, we also speak of a client-supplier relationship between high-level and low-level modules, because the latter provides functionality that the former can call within their own scope to solve a certain problem. So in order to make copy small and easy to read again, the dependency inversion principle suggests that we introduce an abstraction between the client and the supplier. So what is an abstraction? In object-oriented programming, one would use interfaces or abstract base classes for this purpose. That is, a type that defines methods but does not implement them. The implementation can be done in subclasses that inherit from the abstraction. So let's add abstractions to our code and check where this will lead us to. First, I create an interface called iReader and that has a read method on it. This method returns the console key info that we will use to check whether we should quit or forward the character to the target. The other thing that the copy function should do is to write to the target. And therefore I create an interface called iWriter where I put the write method that receives a single character as an argument. Of course, we need classes implementing these interfaces and therefore I create a new one called console reader that implements the iReader interface only forwarding the read call to the console read key function. The same thing can be done with the iWriter interface. I create a new class called ConsoleWriter that implements this interface and just forwards the call to console.write. And finally, I create a class called FileWriter that forwards the call to an instance of StreamWriter. An object of StreamWriter is instantiated in a constructor of this class and referenced via a private field. So we're good to go to use these new types in our copy function. First, I introduce two variables called reader and writer that use the two interfaces we just created. I then change the first call to reader.read and the last call to writer.write. And please notice that I also remove all the initialization, disposal and if else parts of the code. So just Programming to an abstraction removed a lot of dependencies from my version of the copy function, mainly because we do not know the intrinsic details of the low-level modules that are targeted. There's one problem remaining. 
How do we get hold of objects that conform to the iReader and iWriter interfaces? The easiest way would be to instantiate these directly at the beginning of the method. But this is again a violation of the dependency inversion principle, because in the scope of the high-level module, you target concrete implementations of the abstractions. Thus, the copy function has explicit knowledge of the concrete types used for iReader and iWriter, and this phenomenon is also called tight coupling in object-oriented design. So, newing up reader and writer by ourselves within the function scope is not the answer. But how do we get hold of the necessary objects so that our copy function does not throw a null reference exception when they are used? The only correct way is to pass in these objects as arguments, and this technique is called dependency injection. It simply means that objects that are required for a piece of code to work are passed in instead of instantiated by that very piece of code itself. This means that copy becomes configurable, because you have the ability to specify different objects as arguments. But of course, we have to pass in these objects when we call the copy function, and this leads us right to the next design pattern, called composition root. A composition root is the central place in your application where you resolve all the dependencies between the modules that you want to use within your program. Usually this means that we instantiate all necessary objects so that they can be injected into other objects or functions. We can think of this part as something similar to Lego, where you put all the small pieces together until they form a cohesive working whole. In our case, we see that copy requires a reader and a writer as arguments. And that's why we create a console reader and a console writer in the composition route. But if we want the copy function to write to a file, we just have to compose the object graph differently, by using an instance of FileWriter instead. If we execute this program now, we see that after inputting some characters, the text file is empty. This happens because we do not dispose of the stream writer that is used within the file writer. To achieve that, I quickly implement the iDisposable interface in that class and then call the dispose method after copy returns. Then the text is really written to the file when our program ends. So here are the important things that you should have noticed in the last transformation. Copy is nearly as small as it was in the initial version, but we have the ability to inject different readers and writers, thus it is a lot more flexible. Copy does not care about calling possible necessary initialization or disposal methods. This is all handled in the main function. You really have to understand that once you program against abstractions in a high-level module, this very high-level module is not responsible for managing the lifetime of objects that it uses. These lifetime issues should be managed by another part of your code. You can exchange the writer that copy uses by implementing the iWriter interface and updating the composition route. Please notice that you do not have to touch the code of copy at all in this circumstance. You just have to inject a different object that is compliant with the iWriter interface. Thus copy can be used in different scenarios without changing its code. Of course, the same goes for the iReader parameter. All the dependencies that copy requires are instantiated in the composition route. This piece of code usually resides right at the beginning of the main method, because it is normally the first thing you have to do in an object-oriented program. New up all objects necessary and connect them with each other so they form a sensible object graph. Afterwards, you usually just have to call a run method on a high-level module to execute the actual functionality of your program. And all these points address the first part of the dependency inversion principle. I would argue that this is nothing more than saying program against abstractions instead of concrete types. And I'm sure that you heard of this programming principle before. But what about the second statement that abstractions should not depend upon details? Actually, we violate this part of the dip too. Have a look at the read method of the iReader interface. It returns a console key info. The problem is that this type is specific to reading a value from the console. Consider an iReader implementation that reads from a network stream. How would you create a console key info value in this case? 
I think it's obvious that we brought the details of a specific iReader implementation to the abstraction, and that's what we are going to fix next. I start by creating a new type called readResult that will essentially be a simple data structure containing the red character and a boolean value indicating where the copy should stop reading from the source. Both of these values are obtained via the constructor and saved in public read-only fields. Of course, this change means that I have to change the console reader implementation so that it conforms to the new method header of the iReader interface. Instead of returning a console key info, I create a new instance of read result and map the values to the corresponding constructor parameters. This change also results in an adjustment of the copy function, but the introduction of read result actually simplifies the code even more, because should quit and character are telling names. So the second part of the dip just tells you to keep details of a specific implementation out of the interface, mostly because the client code should not know about these and so that the abstraction could be used in different scenarios. In short, the interface is tailored to the client, not to the supplier. And that's mainly all there is to the dependency inversion principle. Let's recap shortly. Program against abstractions instead of concrete types. Call lower level modules polymorphically to avoid tight coupling between client and supplier code. Abstractions are tailored to the corresponding clients, not to the suppliers. Avoid low-level details in your interfaces and abstract base classes. Pass concrete objects that correspond to abstractions to clients via dependency injection. Do not new up concrete low-level modules in high-level modules because this means tight coupling. And opt for a single place where you resolve the dependencies between your objects that are necessary to run your program. This is called the composition root pattern and it resides usually directly at the entrance of your application. In the end, we arrive at the same result as proposed by Uncle Bob in his paper, where the copy program interacts with low-level modules through abstractions. The last thing I want to do in this video is to make a class out of the copy function so that our code is fully object-oriented. I start by creating a new class called copyProcess that has a parameterless execute method, where I move the source code of copy to. As there are no parameters, I access reader and writer through fields of the class and I obtain references to the corresponding objects by so-called constructor injection, which is just another form of dependency injection. This essentially means that you pass in required values through the constructor. To ensure that reader and writer are actually valid values, I use guard classes at the beginning of the constructor to check for possible null values. If they are found, I throw an exception which guarantees that copy process cannot be instantiated with invalid values. This allows me to delete the static copy method. And to call copyprocess.execute, I have to new up an instance of that class in the composition root. And here we arrived where we started at the beginning, calling a parameterless method to copy something from a source to a target. Only now our solution is object oriented and highly flexible. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye!